William Rodriguez is a maintenance worker at the Trade Center, I believe. In any case, he's on the phone with us now. Mr. Rodriguez, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Tell me where you were when, well, which of the two buildings uh, were you in? I work on the building one, the and one that got hit uh, the first time. Tell me what happened. Uh, I was on the basement, which is a support floor for the maintenance company, and uh, we hear like a big rumble, not like an impact, like a rumble, uh, like something uh, like moving furniture on a, on a, on a massive way, and um, all of a sudden we hear another rumble, and a guy comes running, running into our office, and all his skin was off his body. B1 office, B1 level, is what they have the support office for my company, the cleaning company, American Building Maintenance. So I was talking to the supervisor, and at 846, we hear BOOM! An explosion so hard that pushes us upwards in the air. Upwards. And it came out from below us, from the mechanical room that was right below us. And it was so loud and so powerful that all the walls cracked, the false ceiling fell on top of us, the sprinkler system got activated, and everybody started screaming so loud because they didn't know what was going on. Uh, we hear like a big rumble. An explosion so hard. Uh, we hear like a big rumble. An explosion so hard. Yeah, it was like there was a whole lot of commotion. The firefighters were picking up and they were starting to, to roll out and, and go follow these, um, these buses that went downtown. And um, the, uh, the Red Cross rep was like, he goes over and he, and he, and he says, well, you've got to stay behind this line because they're thinking about bringing a building down. They didn't say what building. They just said bringing a building down. So we're like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll take their word before it. You know, we'll stay behind the line. And he went over and he talked to one of the, uh, through all the commotion, he goes over and he asked one of the Red Cross or one of the firefighters what was going on. I guess, I don't know if he got an answer or not. He came back over with his hand over the radio and it sounded like a countdown. And at the last few seconds, he took his hand off, and you heard three, two, one, and he was just saying, just run for your life, just run for your life. And then it was like another two, three seconds, you heard explosions, like ba boom. It's like a distinct sound. It's not like when in compression, like boom, 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 like floors that were dropping and collapsing. This was ba boom, and like you felt a rumble in the ground, like almost like you wanted to grab onto something. That, to me, I knew that was an explosion. There was no doubt in my mind. And by that time, we're running out into the street. Half the people were taken off, running up the street, and then everybody's running into the center of the street. Meanwhile, everybody that was south of that intersection was running up the street, getting chased by this cloud of smoke, which was monstrous. And they were just, people were getting knocked over, trampled on. And, you know, like I was asking myself, do I run into, you know, into the, into the dust and run down there to maybe try to help what, those people that were on the buses? Or do I try to help the people right here? Or do I just try to cover my own ass and take off and try to, you know, seek cover and hide? And I did the best that I could in the intersection right there, picking some, a few people up. And then I took off and ran and seek cover for myself. And, um, I'm not sure what street it was, but there's a clip of Amy Goodman running from the from the cloud. I was about about 40 feet away from her, and it was the same intersection. And we were split up into half of us were going to be uh, medical support, and this is all within the domain of Red Cross. Half of us were going to be medical support, and the other people were going to be search and rescue. Now, I we were we were kind of mad because the people that actually had medical support training wanted to do the search and rescue work but we were getting like split up with no rhyme or reason and we saw four it was like four or five city buses just packed with packed to the hill with citizens 
New York citizens that were wanting to just go down there and help. They thought that they were going to go down there and help, and next thing you know, 10 minutes later, Building 7 drops. While we were on the right side, there was firefighters getting ready, they were bustling back and forth, and a couple of vets that were there, they, uh, they, they, they got the vibe that something was coming down. And we started asking questions, everybody started asking questions, and then next thing you know, uh, there were the, the Red Cross representatives pacing back and forth in front of the crowd, holding his hand over the radio. And we, I didn't, couldn't hear what it was saying, but it was like, it, it was pulsed. Whatever the speech was on there was pulsed, and that means to me it was most likely a countdown. But he took his hand off at the last three seconds, and he gave this like heartfelt look, like he didn't want, just run for your life, because he didn't want to bring it on his conscience. He didn't want to go to his grave with that. Jesus and Christ. And we had a couple seconds to put, put our heads together, and it was like three quarter of us ran up the street, and then the other quarter of us were like standing there like what should we do and next thing you know like they started to funnel out and run into the crowd because it was a stampede going up the street and like three or four people were started hitting people look football style to open up a hole like it was a mosh pit and started picking people off the ground and uh, there was you know there was a, a woman there that uh, I, I guess picked up the wrong way and put my hands on the wrong area and she went to take a swing at me and you know I pushed her on her way and that's basically how that went down. And then about 15, 20 minutes later, the smoke cleared. After I started to get hit with a little bit of debris, I ran into an archway for a door because that was the most protected area I could find. And maybe about 15, 20 minutes later, it started to clear up and everybody funneled back into the intersection and they said, oh, come back at 10 o'clock and then we'll be ready to roll out. Came back at 10 o'clock, nobody was there. Went on my own from then. with his hand over the radio and it sounded like a countdown and at the last few seconds he took his hand off and you heard three two one and he was just saying just run for your life just run for your life there were the, the red cross representatives pacing back and forth in front of the crowd holding his hand over the radio and we i didn't, couldn't hear what it was saying but it was like it, it was pulsed whatever the speech was on there was pulsed and that means to me it was most likely a countdown but he took his hand off at the last three seconds and he gave this like heartfelt look like he didn't look, just run for your life he with his hand over the radio and it sounded like a countdown and at the last few seconds he took his hand off and you heard three two one and he was just saying just run for your life just run for your life Shows media scripting because it shows media scripting because shows media scripting. with people knowing the truth about 9 11, and I was the first to expose 9 11 on the day. And